Okay, the second category of cell structure slash organelles that we're going to be talking about is the endomembrane system. So endo means inside of, and the membrane is for membrane. Essentially, the system is a series of membranes inside of the cell that help to produce cellular products, polish them, package them, and ship them in the cell to where they need to go. This slide shows you which organelles and which membranes are part of this endomembrane system. And it includes them pretty much in order. So we start out here with the nuclear envelope. That's followed by the endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, lysosomes, vacuoles, and the plasma membrane. We're gonna discuss each one of these parts in a little bit more detail over the next few slides. But essentially, we start in the middle of the cell here where the nucleus is. Remember, the nucleus has a membrane that surrounds it. This membrane is called the nuclear envelope. We spent quite a bit of time talking about the nuclear envelope in the genetic control uh, section of this chapter, so we're going to leave that one kind of on its, uh, on its own or leave it to be. And we'll start out with a discussion of the endoplasmic reticulum, which in this figure is shown here as this blue membrane um, and rich structure. From there, we're going to go to the Golgi, which is sort of shown in teal here. And from the Golgi, then the endomembrane system can go to a number of different places. We're going to talk about lysosomes, we're going to talk about vacuoles, um, and then lastly we end up here on the outside of the cell in the plasma membrane. Now you'll notice that the components of the endomembrane system are either directly connected to each other or indirectly connected using vesicles. So a direct connection would, would be seen here between the nuclear envelope and the endoplasmic reticulum. You can see that the membrane right here actually goes from being purple, the nucleus, uh, to becoming blue as part of the endoplasmic reticulum. So that's a direct connection. Now the connection here between the endoplasmic reticulum and the Golgi is an indirect connection. You'll notice that the two membranes are not directly connected to each other. Instead, you have these little vesicles, these little pockets that pinch off the endoplasmic reticulum and transport themselves over here to the Golgi and then fuse with the membrane of the Golgi. Um, so this would be an example of that indirect connection using those little transport vesicles. And the same thing happens here on the other side of the Golgi. You have vesicles that butt off and either can become lysosomes or travel here to the plasma membrane. Again, we'll talk about that process in a minute. But let's start out with uh, discussion of the endoplasmic reticulum here, one of the first components of the endomembrane system. All right. So the endoplasmic reticulum is a highly abundant organelle in the cell, um, and it oftentimes accounts for more than half of the total membrane of many eukaryotic cells. Uh, the endoplasmic reticular membrane also is continuous with the membrane of the nuclear envelope as we discussed on the previous slide. And again, you can see that here in the blow up um, showing you a closer representation of the nuclear envelope here becoming part of the blue endoplasmic reticulum membrane. Now the ER exists in essentially two different parts. There's two different kinds of ER. We've got your smooth ER and we've got the rough ER. They differ primarily based on structure, but also on function. So for example, the smooth ER, this one is called the smooth ER because it lacks ribosomes on the outside of the membrane. If you look at the cartoon diagram over here, the smooth ER is shown having a nice smooth surface on the outside of the membrane. This means that there are no ribosomes, no bound ribosomes attached to the smooth ER. The smooth ER also has a different organization to the membrane. So the membranes seem much more tubular, it kind of looks like coral, right? And so the smooth ER has those tubular membranes that are all sort of interconnected. The other kind of ER is the rough ER. The rough ER is called the rough ER because it actually has bound ribosomes covering the outside of the membrane, so it makes it have a rougher appearance. And so the rough ER you can see out here, right? And you can see all of those ribosomes attached to the external surface of that rough ER. The rough ER also, in terms of its membrane, is not tubular. The membranes are more like flattened sacs that are all interconnected to each other. Regardless, the rough and the smooth ER can be connected to each other, so um, you know materials can move easily between the two. It's all one big interconnected membrane, just with slightly different structures and with and without the ribosomes. On the right-hand side here, we've got a 
an electron micrograph showing you um, essentially the two different ERs. So you've got the smooth ER that's more tubular here on the left, and if you look at the membranes, there's no ribosomes attached to the outside of the membrane. The rough ER here is more of those flattened sacs, right, where you have those tiny little black specks. Those are going to be the bound ribosomes attached to the outside of that rough ER. Okay, so let's talk about function of these two different types of ER. First of all, the smooth ER. It has a variety of different functions. The only thing it really doesn't do is help to make proteins. This is because it does not have those ribosomes attached to the outside of the membrane, right? The ribosomes are really what make the proteins, and seeing as how the smooth ER doesn't have any ribosomes attached to it, it's not going to help with protein production. What does it do then? Well, it can help to synthesize lipids, including phospholipids and steroid-based molecules for the cell. It also helps to metabolize some carbohydrates. It functions as a detoxification of uh, location of drugs and poisons. So a great example of this would be detoxification of alcohol, for example. Um, so quick scenario, right? You have a, a freshman in college that goes off to four-year school and is living on campus, and they uh, start to enjoy parties on the weekends, let's say, where there's drinking of alcoholic beverages involved. And let's say the student has never had an alcoholic beverage and they have their first one, and after half a drink they're completely loaded um, and their body can't metabolize that alcohol very well because their cells are not used to seeing it. They might not have as much of that smooth ER there to help with a detoxification process. As the semester progresses, as the year progresses, maybe by the end of freshman year, they're saying, wow, you know, I just went to a party and I had, I don't remember how many drinks I had, and yet I still don't really feel the effects of the alcohol like I did when I went to that first party. What has happened over the course of the semester is they built up a, a tolerance for the alcohol. And that comes from actually that person's cells starting to build more and more smooth ER to try to handle the amount of alcohol that's being consumed by the individual. Right? The cells initially freak out and say, well, we can't handle all this. We've got to beef up our smooth ER so they build more of it. The more smooth ER you have, the more alcohol that you can clear from the body faster. And so you need to drink more to feel the same effects um, if you have more of that smooth ER, and that leads to tolerance. Okay, and then the last function of the smooth ER is that in certain cells, like your muscle cells, there's a very special kind of smooth ER that helps to store calcium ions. Calcium ions are important in muscle contraction. When the muscle is not contracting, that calcium needs to be stored somewhere. And the smooth ER is the place where those ions do get stored in muscles. Okay, let's talk about functions of the rough ER. Rough ER is different from the smooth ER because it has those bound ribosomes. So the primary function of the rough ER is to help in the processing of the proteins that the ribosomes produce. For example, when a ribosome makes a protein, it gets shoved into the inside of the rough ER. And the rough ER oftentimes will have different enzymes that will help to start polishing those proteins. Maybe the proteins need to be cut. Maybe they need to have uh, components added to them. For example, some proteins are what we call glycoproteins. So it's a protein that essentially has carbohydrates covalently bond, bonded to the protein. In order to get those carbohydrates attached, an enzyme needs to come over and attach them to the protein. And these enzymes are oftentimes found in the rough ER. So the rough ER helps to polish the proteins that the ribosomes that are bound to it are creating. And once the proteins are finished and polished, uh, the rough ER will then help by transporting those proteins to the next stage of the endomembrane system, which is the Golgi. And the way the rough ER does that is it'll package those proteins into transport vesicles and send them off to the next step. On top of helping with polishing of those uh, proteins, the rough ER also does help to make some membrane for the cell. And that includes the production of phospholipids. So really both the smooth and the rough ER help to make phospholipids for the cell. Those phospholipids get immediately incorporated into the rough ER and smooth ER membranes. And then as those vesicles pinch off of the membrane of the ER, right, that membrane eventually might become part of the plasma membrane, for example, or the membrane of the lysosomes. So really, the ER is going to be a membrane factory for the cell. 
Okay, then the next step of the uh, endomembrane system is the Golgi. The Golgi apparatus uh, looks somewhat similar to the rough ER, not that it has ribosomes on it, but it, it's made out of these flattened membranous sacs. I think of the Golgi kind of like a stack of pitas. And the pitas aren't necessarily directly connected to each other, um, but proteins can move through the Golgi um, essentially by pinching off of one pita and going to the next pita, pinching off of that one, going to the next one. Um, so let's take a look at the Golgi. We have a nice little figure here. The Golgi has two sides. On this side, the Golgi faces the ER. This is called the receiving size side or the cis face. This is where the little blue vesicles from the gold, or I'm sorry, from the ER come over and fuse with the first um, pita of the Golgi. In that first pita, you're going to have some enzymes that help to polish the proteins more so that are coming from the ER. And so the proteins, when they hang out in that first pita, will get polished a little bit more. When they're done, then little vesicles will pinch off the first pita and then maybe go to the second pita. In the second pita, there are going to be other uh, uh, enzymes that help to polish the proteins in a different way. And so in this way, going from pita to pita to pita to the other side of the Golgi, the proteins continuously get more and more polished until they're complete. When they get to the other side, those complete proteins then approach this, what we call the transface or the shipping side, and the Golgi will package them into appropriate vesicles and ship the vesicles to where they need to go. So you can think of the Golgi sort of uh, as a polishing, packaging, and shipping center for the cell. It'll help to modify products of the ER. It also does help to manufacture certain macromolecules, certain carbohydrates, for example, are produced here in, in the Golgi. And then once everything is complete, it'll take and sort all those products, package them into those transport vesicles and make sure that they need to get to where they are going. Now, where could these vesicles go to? Well, one of the components that gets produced by the Golgi is another organelle that's called the lysosome. I like to think of the lysosome as the stomach of the cell, right? So your stomach helps with digestion of your food, right? Um, your stomach has digestive enzymes, or what we call hydrolytic enzymes in it. Your stomach also has a very low pH because these enzymes like to have that low pH to function at their optimal capacity. The lysosome is exactly the same, just inside of one of these cells, primarily animal cells. So a lysosome is going to be filled with these hydrolytic enzymes, ones that can digest macromolecules. And these lysosomal enzymes work best under low pH. Uh, this is because they are best folded at that low pH. If they're folded the best, they can function the best, right? And so both the hydrolytic enzymes and the membrane that creates the lysosomes, both of these are made by the rough ER, transferred to the Golgi uh, for further processing, and then packaged by the Golgi to become an actual lysosome. So let's take a look at this process through this animation. Like secretory proteins and some other proteins, proteins destined for lysosomes are made on ribosomes bound to the rough ER and move through the endomembrane system. In this case, the lysosomal protein-containing vesicle that buds from the Golgi apparatus is the lysosome itself. Right, so in this animation, you had a protein that was produced here in the ER. It got packaged, shipped to the Golgi. It was polished in the Golgi. It transport. It was transported between the pitas, and eventually, on the um, shipping side of the Golgi, it was packaged into a little vesicle, and that vesicle becomes then the lysosome with the hydrolytic enzymes in the inside, the low pH, and then the membrane surrounding it.